Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for another day. Thank you for this opportunity, O oh God, to come before you once again, to lift up your holy name, to praise your name, O oh God, because you are good, because you are great and greatly to be praised. Father, it's not any good that we have done, but it's because of your mercy. Thank you, God. Thank you for considering us. Thank you for thinking about us. Even when we were not faithful to you, thank you for being faithful to us. When there are so many times, oh God, when we have not even thought about you, you have thought about us time and time again. Today, God, we just want to give you a high note of praise and say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, mighty God. Lord, today you have given us another opportunity to celebrate you, to praise you, to worship you, to exalt you, to extol your holy name. Thank you, God. Be with us. Be with us, Father. Even as we listen to hear from you today because Lord you always speak there is always something that you say to us that can carry us throughout the day throughout the week even throughout the rest of the month because Lord you love us like that you love us with an everlasting love you love us unconditionally you love us oh God to the extent where you literally made a way of escape for us from our sinful way of life. You sent your son to die. And for that, we are forever grateful. Thank you, God. Thank you for what you did. Thank you, God, for the difference that has made in our lives. It has now brought us into fellowship with you. At first, the relationship was broken. But now, God, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Mighty God, thank you for that. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. When we think about your goodness, our soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank you, God, for saving us. Thank you, God, for making a way of escape. Thank you, God, for bringing us back into fellowship with you. Lord, I pray today that your word would reach our hearts. It would take root deep down and cause change and transformation to take place in our lives. Take charge of the airwaves, O oh God. And cause your word today to go forth with power, with anointing, and with clarity. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, God. Blessed be your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Good morning. This is Diane, and I'm coming to you today with another word of encouragement. I am coming to you today with another word from the Word of God. And it is always my hope, it really is, that by the time we are done today, that your life will be encouraged in the Lord. You will be uplifted. 
you will feel motivated to carry on for Jesus, to carry on even when things look rough, even when things are in fact rough. You will carry on for Christ even when you have hit rock bottom. Have you ever hit rock bottom? Do you know anyone who has ever hit rock bottom? And the situation is so difficult that they cannot see their way out. It could be you. It could be that. There was a time in your life when you did hit rock bottom. It could be that you feel as if you are there even now. But I'm here today, friends, to encourage you, to encourage you to hold on to God. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Hold on to his promises. I'm telling you, friends, you will not hold on in vain because our God is a promise keeper. He's a way maker. He's a heavy load sharer. I'm saying this because I have proven it time and time again. There have been times in my life when I felt as if that's it. There is no hope left. I cannot see any way out of this. And then the Lord would come right in at that time because he's never late, friends. Our God is never late. You may say, but I need this now or I need that next week and you're fretting already and next week isn't even here yet. But I assure you, friends, that when the time comes, when the time is right, in the fullness of God's timing, he will come through for you. He will. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall, let me use the word, redeem him, save him, pull him out of them all. Only believe God's word. Sometimes you share your problems with people and they say things like, I don't know how that's going to work out, you know. Because the last person that went through that never made it. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You trust God. You believe God. Even when you think or you feel like you're on the verge of death. Even though you are walking through the shadow of death. Fear no evil fear no evil word fear no negative talk just put them aside tell those who are speaking negatively all right don't stay over right here so and you continue trusting god you continue holding on to god he will never put you to shame he will never let you down he will never ever go against his promises our problem at times is our lack of faith our doubt our unbelief that's what hinders us most times i've proven it because i've hindered myself a lot but i'm learning friends i'm learning to lean and depend on jesus i'm learning to trust his word because he himself declared, heaven and earth shall pass away before one of my words fall to the ground or pass away. Believe God, friends. Hold on to him. Search the scriptures for the promises that he has made to you. You will not have to look too far. You will not have to look too far. Read his word and let it take root in your heart and you will see how differently things turn out for you because you will now apply. You will not only read, you will not only get fat, 
on knowledge, but you would act. Act on what you have read. Act upon what you're seeing, what's taking root in your heart. Because the more you read God's word, it's the more it becomes a part of you. Don't just gloss over it. That's a phrase we use when we just read in this absent-minded kind of way. We're not there. We're just doing a duty or some sort of thing that somebody asked us to do. Read God's word for yourself, friends. It's not just about what the pastor says on the weekend. Pick it up. Sometimes they make mistakes, but you would never know because you don't read. Not saying you're going to know everything all at once. But once you start to get in the word, you will know when somebody is coming with false doctrine and stuff that God did not say. Many love to add to God's word and put it in the context that they want it to mean so that they can deceive others. Do not fall into that trap, friends. All right? Ask the Lord to enlighten you. And he will. He will show you the way. He will change your perspective. He will cause you to see things in a brand new light. Brand new way. Do not let anyone bamboozle you, pull any wool over your eyes. I, I saw my husband listening to a message last night. And some of the things I was hearing, I just had to shake my head. I shook my head because I'm like, imagine in this day and age, people are still preaching stuff to tickle people's ears and to, you know, give them this feel good vibe at times. Yes, in Ecclesiastes, it says there's a time and place for everything, but there is never a time, I think, to be so deceived that you go against what God says in this constant way because a preacher decided to twist the word of God. We have to be so careful nowadays. Motives. Motives. What are the motives? All right? None of this is even what we're talking about today, but I'm just following the leading of the Holy Spirit. And he wants you to know today, friends, to be vigilant, be watchful, be prayerful, and by all means, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Okay? Have faith in God. Okay, today we are looking at, you have received new birth. And I'm reading today from our devotional. Yes, Jesus always. Ever since I started using this devotional at the beginning of the year, it has really just up, uplifted my life. I, I'm not sure how much the particular readings from this you know, have helped you, but I'm telling you, friends, my life has been transformed because we have been we have been pretty consistent. There, I use it sometimes. Sometimes I don't. If I'm doing like a series on something else, but this is a very good book. It was given to me as a gift in December when we did that empowerment cruise by my good friend, Sister Jacqueline Richardson. You know, she just gave me this as a token, I believe, you know, for just the way we were able to minister in that format. God is good. All right. So today the Lord is saying to us, and this is Jesus speaking now. You have received a new birth into a living hope through my resurrection from the dead. I died on the cross to pay the penalty for the sins of all my followers. However, 
if I had remained dead, your faith would be useless and you would forever be spiritually dead, still guilty of your sins. Of course, it was impossible for my death to be permanent because I am God. As I stated clearly to those who questioned me, I and my Father are one. My resurrection is an extremely well-documented historical fact. This miraculous event opened the way for you to experience new birth. By confessing your sinfulness and trusting me as your Savior, you have become one of my own, walking along a pathway to heaven. Because I am your living Savior, you walk along a way of living hope. The light of my loving presence shines upon you always, even in your darkest, most difficult moments. Look up to me, beloved. Let my brilliant love, light, pierce the darkness and fill your heart with joy. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a good thing, friends. Christ did not remain dead. That's basically what this is saying to us today. He died, but his resurrection is a well-documented historical fact. So many would try to get people to deviate from that. If it's right there in the Bible, you know, all sorts of plans they had to say the body was stolen, to say all sorts of things. But it couldn't stick. None of it could stick. There were too many other questions that would be left unanswered if people were to go with their theory that they were trying to come up with. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Savior is risen. And because of that, we have new birth, new life. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? It's because of that historical event that we can come to God boldly for ourselves. It's because of that new birth where we're no longer stuck in our sinfulness. And that is why, friends, we do not have to make these excuses for living in, in a life of sin after the Lord has done all that and we said yes to his will and to his way. Nowadays in Christendom, you have persons who are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Some are saying, you know, we're just human. We're not perfect. Yes, we're gonna be in sin sometimes. And listen, friends, I get it. But not when they're selling that as a Christian, you have to live in sinfulness. No, Christians do not live in sin. No, we don't. The Bible says, if we fall, we have an advocate with the Father. So we should be running to God, not staying there. But what many have chosen to do is to stay, forgetting that Christ died for the sins that you have committed. All we have to do is repent and say, Father, forgive me. I have sinned. I have messed up. We need to own it, accept his forgiveness and move on. We do not allow anyone to condemn us. No, we don't. But once we stay there, we are already condemned. It's not so much that people are judging us. Yes, there are times when people do judge others wrongfully. Yes, it happens. I'm not naive. I know it happens. But what I'm saying, the focus that I want us to have 
is not our inability to live right. I'm talking about what Christ did to give us that power to live right. He sent his Holy Spirit to abide with us. All we have to do is stay close to God. When we feel we're being pulled away by our own evil desires, because yes, it happens. Let's stop blaming the devil for everything. We're no friends of the devil. I'm just saying there are times when we are the ones, because remember, we have a free will. Free will. The Lord did not create robots and puppets, and he just tells us everything. And if we don't, we, you know, he kills us, you know, just kill us off one by one. No, our God is not like that. He's not a dictator. He allows us to choose. He allows us to decide what we want to do. So today, friends, let us be reminded and encouraged about that powerful work that Christ did on the cross to set us free from sinfulness. We have received new birth. That means we cannot continue living the old way of life. No, we cannot. We cannot become comfortable again living in sin. No, we must reach towards God and do His will and walk according to His way. His way is best. His way is best. Some of you would have heard me say it before that I had an uncle. You know, he's passed away now. He used to say, the Christian life is the best life to live, even if there was no heaven to attain. Because this kind of life causes us to walk in a particular way that helps us. Yes, it does. You know, some of us, when we reminisce, can we look back on how we grew up, even in church, and we say things were strict. You know, you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that, you couldn't wear this, you couldn't go there. Listen, some of that stuff, we despise it now because we say it was bondage and it wasn't the word of God, but it kept us. It kept us, well, those of that generation, you know, kept us in line. Yes, there were times just like now when we would slip away and slip out and go and do our own thing. I used to leave my grandparents' house dressed one way to go to a function. And by the time I got through the gate, I changed my clothes. Talking about, we're going in frock. School having barbecue, where you going in that? <laughs> Listen, if, if some of us were to be honest and speak the truth and shame the devil, we would understand that, hey, things weren't always like this, you know. We, yeah, we were rebellious. We were own way. You know, we wanted to have our own way. We did our own thing. Right? You know, but I'm saying, friends, what the Lord did for us, really, he really freed us. We're not in bondage. We're not, you know, we're not. As we live, we learn. As we live, we learn. There were some things that we had to abide by. And I'm saying it was good for when it lasted because it, it kept us in line. It kept us in a particular way. It's just like the law. The law kept the people before Christ died. Before grace came on the scene. It was the law. The problem is man could not keep the law. It doesn't matter how much they tried. There were a few that were described in the Bible as upright and did, you know, good in the sight of the Lord and so on. But the law was created to keep man in line. Jesus came now and he died for us and he opened up the thing. So instead of even going through the blood of animals and sacrifices and you know, the priests going and once a year and making atonement and all of this stuff. 
Christ just made it easier for us to access him. Any and anybody could not have gone into the Holy of Holies. No way. Even the priest, if he's not right, that's why they used to have the card tied on them with the little bell. <laughs> right? Listen, we have no idea sometimes what God really did when he caused Christ to die for us to give us access. Not just access, but direct access access can you imagine that oh my god it makes you want to live for that person who died for you that's how i feel i'm motivated friends daily to walk with christ i mean do rough times show up at times yeah man real talk hardship Makes you want to wonder, well, really God, where are you? But as I said in the beginning, I'm learning to lean on Jesus. I'm learning to trust him. I try not to worry. I try to practice that which I'm preaching. I tell you, sometimes some things come to shake your foundation, to shake you up. To check, it's like, you know, situations checking if you are the real deal, if you're only talking. You know how many times I've been encouraging folks to hold on to God and then something comes to shake my core and then I'm hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit saying to me, mm -hmm, let's see if you have learned anything. You understand? Because we can't just be teaching these things or sharing them with each other and we're not practicing it. Listen, I believe that my blood pressure stays a particular way because I'm learning to lean on Christ. Friends, sometimes we're the ones that are making ourselves sick with worry, with stress. We take stress on. Listen, friends, I'm learning how to relax in God. I said, come what may. I do not, you know, I said, I said, Lord, I believe in you more than what the devil is doing. That's my approach. Lord, I trust you more than what I'm seeing with my natural eyes. Because when we look, friends, and we see what we see and we hear what we hear, if we're not careful, it will cause us to stumble. It will cause us to fall. So when we are admonished to keep our eyes on Christ, it's not a reproof. It's, it's good advice, man. Keep your focus on Christ. I'm learning how to eliminate stress and worry. There are some particular persons, and I'm being real now, every single time I have a conversation with them on the phone, it turns into a quarrel. So you know what I do? Honestly, I'm being honest with you, friends, and you all could <laughs> um, think about me how you want after this. I limit my time with such persons. And you know what that brings? Peace. Joy. Happiness. Contentment. I kid you not. Sometimes they call in and I know they call in to quarrel. I don't answer them. I'm being honest with you. I don't answer them. Okay? Let's get real friends. Do not allow folks to keep you in this constant state of worry and anxiety. Why? Why they must sleep on you up at nights? No way. Christ did not die for you to be worried all the time. It doesn't matter what it is. I don't care what it is. You have some bills due. You not see the money. Trust God. All right? The rent is due. You not see the money. Trust God. Them now put you out. 
I'm just saying, the Lord will come through for you, friends. I'm not talking about people who are deliberate in not, you know, paying their bills. Because you have some people like that. You know, borrow people money and them not pay them back on them someday. Jesus didn't die for us to live this kind of way, friends. Let's be true to God first. And then we will be able to be true with one another. There are particular obstacles. There are some particular things that he has given you the control over. He controls your life, right? Yes, he does. He controls your life ultimately. But he gives us common sense. Let's use it. He gave us a brain. He gave us a sound mind. What do you think all of that stuff is all about? Being able to think for yourselves. So when you think for yourself, you don't allow anybody to lead you astray. You become a leader, not a follower at that time. If they're going down the wrong path, you don't follow them because of who it is. Okay? You don't follow them because they have a big title and they're talking foolishness or they're going the wrong way. You don't follow them. Don't let them bully you and say things to frighten you and to get you to comply. Those are manipulators and controllers. If they're not, I don't know, some people it's like they get a kick out of controlling others. It's like they, it's the air that they breathe. They must be manipulating and trying to control somebody on or otherwise their life is meaningless i don't get it i have no desire whatsoever zero desire to control somebody else zero desire that's too much work man control that one control that one what are you puppet master come on Nobody got time for that. Let us focus on Christ. Let us focus on what he did. Let's focus on the new birth. Read his word. Pray fast. Draw close to him. Keep up with our spiritual disciplines. Ask the Lord to help us in any way that we're falling short. All right? Rejoice in his resurrection. You're free. You're free indeed. No more chains. Bask in the freedom that God has given. Live your life day by day with Christ. One step at a time. One foot before the other. You cannot walk any other way. All right? So for those who are facing obstacles and difficulties and difficult people difficult circumstances turn it over to Christ he will give you the wisdom of how to handle certain things some of what he tells you you're gonna resist at first because it you know you're not used to complying with what God says sometimes it's hard friends I, I'll be the first to admit sometimes it's hard but when they constantly provoke you and you want to put them in a them place and the Holy Spirit is saying, step back. Man, you get frustrated, you vex. <laughs> but I assure you, God's way is best. I am learning that. I'm learning how to let God fight my battles. I'm learning how to just pray and leave them in God's hands. And he takes good care you ever say sometimes some people rise up against you and you follow God's leading and you pray and when you look you still have to turn on and sorry for them real talk alright so it's not worth it to go to hell because somebody said this and somebody do that no no way what Christ did for you is far more precious than what the devil is trying to do even if he uses circumstances and people and places and things to do it all right so today on this monday the 22nd day of july 2019 make up your mind friends 
that you're going to walk God's way. You're going to do it God's way because, hey, he made room for you to do that. All right? Walk God's way. Many are the trials, the tribulations, the testings. That's how you get testimony, you know, from tests. Yes, it's hard, but you will testify afterwards as I'm doing now because I could tell you the many things that the Lord has done for me could fill a book and you could write your own story, write your book about what God has done, what he is doing in your life, document it. Because some of this needs to be passed down to your children and your grandchildren. Do it for posterity's sake. You understand? Pass it on, man. I am living a legacy that my grandparents laid down because they were godly people. They were people of prayer. They were kind. They shared. They took people in their home. Strangers fed them, clothed them, took care of them. Some came sick and they nursed them back to health. There's a story of a little child in our family. Well, big woman now. Who they took in sick. Sick. They showed me the little crib that that child grew up in. Sick, nursed back to health because the parents could not do it. That's part of the legacy that I'm living. My life is blessed, not because I'm better than anybody else or I'm gooder, hear this, our word, gooder than anybody else. It's the mercy of God. The Lord will have mercy upon whom he will. Even the vilest of sinners, the Lord can pick that person up and turn them around. It would make our head spin. It does sometimes when we see what God does in the lives of others. It shocks us. Some people, is like we wrote them off. We said, them can't save again. But God, but God, such is the awesomeness of our God, friends. So not write them off yet. All them were bother you and trouble you. Not write them off yet. God can do a work. God can turn it around. Yes, he can. Trust him, only believe, and watch him work. All right, we're going to pray now and ask the Lord. Ask, he said we should ask. Ask and we shall receive. Seek and we will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto us. I mentioned the scriptures. You can actually read them on your own but just this one before I pray first Peter 1 verse 3 it says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead all right friends all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, now we live with great expectation. And that's what I want to end on. Let's live with great expectation because of what God did. That's what we're talking about today. All right, so let's ask the Lord. Ask, seek, knock, knock, and the door will be opened unto us. That's not cliche. That's not memory verse. That's not, listen, it's real. It's the real deal. If you don't ask, how do you expect to receive? Some say, well, God knows what I need already. True, I've had the Lord minister to me before I even prayed because his word said sometimes he answers even before you call. But if he's admonishing us in other parts of his word to come to him, come boldly so that we can obtain mercy. 
Ask, seek, knock. Those are his instructions. Let's follow them. Let's seek the Lord. Let's look to the hills from whence cometh our help. Knowing that our help is not coming from the hills itself, but it's coming from the Lord. What a mighty God. Let's pray. Father, we bless your holy name today. We thank you, God, for your goodness towards us. We cannot cease, O oh God, to praise you and give you thanks because everywhere we look, you are there. Everywhere we turn, you are there. There are times, O oh God, when it would seem as if you're not there. But Lord, we know that your omnipresence causes us to understand that you are everywhere, regardless of how we feel. You are omnipotent, oh God. You are all powerful. You can do all things. You can do all things. And you are omniscient. You know all things. So even those things, oh God, that we fail even to mention at times. You bless us. You bless our lives. You intervene in our affairs. And Lord, that's what we are inviting you to do right now. Come by here, my Lord. Come, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. And just fill our lives with more of you. Your word declares, O oh God, that we should seek you first and everything else will be added to our lives. Help us to do that. Help us not to put our stuff first. We want, we want, we seek your hand, O oh God, but not your face. Help us to seek your face. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Help us to seek your face, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. As I'm praying now, the Lord is speaking to somebody and he's causing you to think about the times when you used to be before him on your face. He's literally showing me a picture of somebody prostrate before him, crying out, crying unto him. But you have allowed the hardness of life the experiences that you have had, the negative things to come between you and the relationship you had with God. He's saying, return, return to me, fall prostrate again and watch me work. Come again and watch me work. I'm just a prayer away I'm just a cry away come come again let's commune again let's fellowship again for what you can give us but we don't really want you Jesus help us God help us Lord help us to seek you God more than ever before 
and what you turn our lives and our circumstances around. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to do that. You are so loving and kind. Oh, God, there is none like you. So, Father, today, help us. We're crying out to you, oh God. One more time, help us to draw close. Help us, oh God, to come in. Help us, oh God. Help us, Father. That's all we can say right now. Help us. Lord, we need you now more than ever. We need your presence. We need your presence. We need your presence, Lord. Help us to cultivate your presence in our lives. Help us to practice praise so that it becomes a part of us, a part of who we are. We already know, oh God, that even worship is a weapon. Lord, help us to understand the secret of a fulfilling life in you, which is a genuine relationship with you. Thank you, God. Lord, I pray right now that you would bless your people even this week in an unusual way give them encounter after encounter with you draw your people back to you god even if they come dragging in lord you are there waiting with open arms to receive thank you god what a mighty god you are surrender to you this morning totally surrender 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 yes God we have so many things at times that we are mindful about that we are anxious about but Lord help us to heed your word and your word says that we should be anxious for nothing nothing but pray about everything. So Lord, today, change our hearts, change our minds about the way that we have been going about our walk with you. When all you're asking for, God, is relationship. Help us, Father, to do things your way and we will see results in our lives. Help us to really put you first, mighty God. Bless your people now, God. Yes, Lord, bless us with your presence. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, do for us more than we can ask or think. You know what we need. You know exactly what we need. So Lord, grant us that thing that we need more than anything else. And that is your presence in our lives. Do it for us, God. Do it, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Friends, the Lord wants us. He wants our lives. Yes, we have issues. We have problems. We have situations and circumstances that we must face. But we're not alone. We're not alone. We're not alone, friends. The Lord is there. The Lord is present. He's there. 
He is our joy, our peace. Everything that we need is in God. The word says he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. All right. The important things that we need, the Lord has already given them to us. Let's build on that. He has given us access. Do you know, hey, do you know how important that is? That means that you can go before God. You can fall prostrate before him. Speak to him and watch him change your life. All right? Let's change our approach, friends. Let's not just rush into God asking for this and that. But let's develop a relationship with him where he speaks to us. There, there are going to be some things that you know and you're wondering how you know. It's not a sixth sense. It's not intuition. None of that. It's the spirit of God revealing when you make yourself available to him. He will show you how to handle some things. He will give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The word in the book of James says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. He will give it liberally. The Lord will grant it. All right? Let's ask the Lord for wisdom. I think wisdom is what we need sometimes more than anything else. And once we operate in the wisdom of God, some things are just going to go away from our lives because we're doing things God's way. All right? I pray a blessing over your life now that you will draw so close to God that when he speaks, you will hear him and you will act upon his leading. You'll be way ahead of the adversary, way ahead. If you normally drive this way to work and the Holy Spirit says, in a still small voice, don't go that way. Just obey and you will see. You will understand. Be vigilant. You know, don't be absent-minded as you bounce through life. No way. That's not how a Christian lives. A Christian is always cognizant of the presence of God in their lives. So it changes the way we speak. It changes the way we act. And when we slip and we fall, we catch ourselves and we run to God and we say, Father, fix me up, man. Help me here. I need you. All right? So I leave you with that today, friends. And I know that because you have now made a decision to put God first, put him in his rightful place in your life, you will have sweet success. Sweet success. Blessings to the overflow. Blessings are real, friends. They, it is a real concept, okay? Yes, life and all of that is a blessing. But there are times when the Lord just causes things to just work in your favor. Favor is more than money. All right, there are some things that money can buy. But hey, when you have the favor of God on your life, doors open that you never dreamed could have. Opportunities come knocking that you never dreamed could have come. Trust God. Trust God with all of your might, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your everything, everything, everything. All right? So you go with God now and know that you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. They will form, but they will not prosper. 
You are the apple of God's eye. He cares about every detail of your life. And everywhere you go, He is there. Alright? So until we meet again in this fashion, friends, take care. God bless you. Thank you.